I think that one, you have to have, you have to have a lot of passion around this. Like when a founder comes to me and they say, I'm looking for a problem to solve, I'm like, hold on right there. I said, because um, looking for a problem to solve, you may end up creating software for something that doesn't exist. exist. Right. right. It doesn't need to be solved yet. Or, right. You know, what have you. So, really love the thing that you're doing and have, you know, have felt it, have experienced it so that like when, when, cause there's going to be good and bad times. So when bad times come, you can find a way to push through those. Everybody, this is Garrett and Sita with Idea to Invention, a podcast for small businesses, inventors, and those alike. Yeah. I said that right. Are inspiring to be everything. Everything. It's a little bit of everything for everybody. <laughs> That's what I think. Oh, yeah. And so we are just so thrilled and honored to have this young lady that Black we are bringing magic. to you today, Miss Ashley. And I'm going to pronounce your name. So, Amons. Ammons, all of Ammons. Ammons, no H. Ah, Ammons, okay. Okay. So Ashley Ammons, who's the co-founder and president of Mixtras, and... Is that how you know? Mixtros. 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 Introductions smooshed together. Mixtros. That makes Got sense. Got you. Because okay. we were like, tras. Better, does it not? It does. Yes, it does. And it makes more sense. Because when I, when I went in my mind, like, mixed trials, I'm like, okay, well, they're not mm. mixing any music or not. But what are they mixing? Mixed, mixed it, okay, now I, Yes. Got it. Okay. So, we are so happy got to it. have you. <laughs> All right? All right. <laughs> and um, I was read, reading through your, your bio and reading through the history of the company. And I have so many questions for, <laughs> for you. Because um, I'm... My previous life, I was technical. I, I, I was um, in corporate America in IT for 23 plus years. Um, and reading as far as what you all are doing as software as a service type of company, I get it. And I was, and it just, I got excited the more and more I read it. And then. Yeah, you should have seen him. His face was steadily lighting up down the page. <laughs> And, and, and hearing about how, you know, it's, it's you and your mom and, you know, how you both are, you can, you classify yourselves as non-techies, but yet you started a tech company. I, there's just so much we're going to get into and that I want to, I want to know. There's a lot to unpack. It is. There's so much to unpack. And so, um, so welcome. We appreciate you, you being here. Um, so if you could, uh, give us and give our audience just a, a, a good introduction of who Ashley is, and, and and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank y'all for having me here. I'm um, I'm always excited to like see faces that look like mine talking about tech. I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, so I am a thirty something, thirty two to be exact. So I'm a thirty two year old woman. I currently live in Birmingham, Alabama. That is where my um, my company is headquartered. Um, my my mom uh, lives here as well. She's my co founder. So I'm currently sitting in a co working space that we work in in downtown Birmingham. What I love about here is the vibe the community in this particular space called Forge is pretty awesome. Like there's people from all walks of life here, all colors, all ages. And so I'm really, uh, I'm glad to be building mixtures from here. Yeah. Um, Birmingham has a really important part in our story because that's where we were able to raise funding. We started our company in Nashville and weren't successfully able to raise there, but we came like 175 miles down one road, literally, and then our story changed. Um, and so wow. I'm happy to be in Birmingham for that reason. You know, it's a little conservative for me, but that's okay. <laughs> like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, get the vibes. So uh -huh. no big deal. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I mean, most of my life is honestly my business. You know, I'm in that, I'm in, I'm at that point in life where um, mixed rows is 80% of what I do, like day to day, week to week. And I'm, and I'm grateful for that because again, without Birmingham being in my story, I don't get to see my business at this stage. So for an entrepreneur, people using my software, it's like all the joy. Oh, so let me, let me back that up. So where are you actually from? 
Oh, I am originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, because I heard the Miss so, Midwest. Look, Ohio girl in the house. Yeah, I was going to Ohio girl in the house. Uh-huh. So I'm from the Midwest. Uh, but after I went to college, I did go to college in Cleveland as well. But after that, I did live in New York City for eight years, and so I like I have a New York tattooed on my wrist. So I really oh, oh clean garbage, right, right. <laughs> so okay, so it, explain to us. How Nashville played, how you ended up in Nashville. Is that where mom was or how? And when you say you couldn't get funding there, kind of paint a picture of what that looks like. Yes. Okay. Well, let me, let me back. Let me try to like paint a clear picture. Okay. So I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. When I was a child, uh, when I was youngish, my mom, um, she showed me really early the value of education. So she went back and she got her master's degree uh, while we had like a blended family of six. So our family has always been pretty interesting because my stepfather is white. I have white step siblings. My brother is multiracial. And then there's me and then there's mom. So like when we used to go on like family vacation, my mom would just be like, listen, TSA is about to tear up your luggage. So like make sure you pack appropriately. Right. No way we're in the 90s about to walk through TSA and like not have a thing. Right. Um, They're like, okay, who's the nanny and who's the wife? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whose child is this? this? Right. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, my family, I, I, I love that about my family because I, from a very early age, saw the value in just connecting with everybody. Like, agnostic of what you look mm-hmm. like. Like, it's more about your character than who you are, like, physically. And so I'm into that. Um, so I, after I finished um, undergrad, and my big claim to fame in undergrad is I was LeBron James' first intern. So after really? I finished undergrad, I moved to New York City, and I, I started off as somebody's assistant, which is common, and I grew to be director of events at that same company. And so it was my event experience that got my mom stuck. My mom and I started in mixed groups. That's how we were able to recognize the problem around networking in the digital age. And so my mom's latest book did land her in Nashville, Tennessee. And so that's why um, Nashville became a place that we um, actually started our business. Oh, cool. Oh, man. That, thank you. That was, that was a good summation. So we got a feeling there's a little bit more to it. Well, I, I, I know there's more. Right, right, right. Because um, we have, I mean, we're, we we're originally go, from, from. We got to go to break first. Don't do We well, have to play by the rules now. We got to go break first. <laughs> So we'll go to the break. rule follower, not me. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go to break and we'll come back and then we'll continue this conversation that is so intriguing. Yes. And we'll be back with Miss Ashley Ammons. There you go. Like, all like, right. Ooh, ooh, I think I'm going to do it. Close. Ammons. <laughs> all right. We'll be back in a few minutes. All right. See ya. <laughs> What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle. Every career. Every smile. Every tear. Each family. Each friend. It builds and makes us who we are. One community. Every boy, every girl, each kink, each curl. We wouldn't change a thing because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions, and our fears. These are the things that keep us. These are the things that make America. Us. Our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. We are back with Idea to Invention, a podcast for inter not interns, <laughs> inventors. See, that was the last thing. Even though know. you know, in- intern can lose, you, you can not definitely like use it. Anymore. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> We're past that stage. Inventors and small businesses, and we are here with Miss Ashley Ammons, <sighs> and she and her mother. 
do you because is it invented an app? What do you what do you say? What do you cre- no? Because there's only one yeah, creator. No, nope. okay. there's only one creator. We don't do create. So um, okay, fair. That's fair because we learned that in Bible study. Yes, I know. <laughs> We'll say invented. They, de- well, they developed. 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 It developed. Sure. There, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Develop the app Mixtros. Mm-hmm. Mixer and introductions. Oh, Smooch together. Wow. See how we did that? <laughs> See how they did that. So Ashley was actually just explaining how she came about, how it all came about. And she the last thing that she uh, mentioned was how she ended up in Nashville, Tennessee. So from Nashville, she's gonna bring it on up to now, right? Yes. Okay, sounds good. So back to you, Ashley. Okay, I'm gonna give you all the synopsis of what happened. So okay. Mixed rows. Today, what it solves for is when people go to an event, so think of yourself at an event. What happens is you go with somebody that you know, and then you stay with that person for the duration of the event. If you do go alone, you will walk into the room and you will scan that room and see if there's somebody that you know, and you'll beeline for those people, or you will beeline for people that look like you. And that is actually a sociological phenomenon. Humans just do that naturally. It's called homophily. And the third thing that happens because we're in the digital age is if none of that works, you will get on your cell phone and you will find a corner and you'll act like you're doing something really important. So you, you ain't doing out. nothing. You up here scanning Instagram. <laughs> That's it. Ooh. Literally, you, you out here scanning Instagram. Ooh, right. <laughs> so what our software does is when you walk into an event, you launch it, you do a quick virtual name tag for yourself and you answer some questions. Those questions are then used and basically those questions and the data that you enter runs through an algorithm and when it's time for you to get broken up into groups, the app tells you who you've been matched with of people that are there with you live and where you're going to go meet them. And so then simultaneously, everybody at the event goes and meets their group. The amazing thing that happens is the volume in the room gets so, so loud because people are like, hi, I'm Ashley and I do this and that. And you know, there's maybe three four or five hundred other people doing the same thing at the same time so you're increasing engagement on one side of it but then the event host gets access to the data that's being collected so we are a uh, two value add we increase engagement and we mm-hmm. collect data so that's how mixtros works so the way that we came up with mixtros is end of 2014 my mom and i um we both had awkward networking experiences and then one night we were on the phone and we just went down a rabbit hole talking about how do people connect in the digital age how do they do it. We got on the Google, that's what my mom calls it. And that's what she calls it. As well. Wait, wait, I'm like this, the Google. <laughs> right. And, right. You know, we started looking for how do people connect to the digital age? And a lot of people were trying to make dating apps technology work for networking and that doesn't necessarily work because bias comes into play Mm -hmm. bias comes into play and that's not a good thing and so we thought of a new way and then we were kind of on to the races but as we've said like we didn't have formal tech background but what we did have is domain expertise and business expertise and that sort of thing and so we used the skills that we had then to build the business that we wanted to model and so, you know, we kind of serendipitously ran into app developers at a conference in Las Vegas. Those people have been with us since um, uh, January of 2015. Really? Uh, literally to this day. And, like, I've only seen Bill. He's like a phantom. I've only seen him, like, maybe five times in real life. <laughs> but without him, our business would not be what it is today. So, basically, just to give people a timeline, because I think that's important. Yeah. The timeline, because yeah. people always think entrepreneurship is, like, sprint. Like you're going to be developing in a college dorm and then like six months later, you're going to be a millionaire. And I want to tell you if that happens for you, write a book because I want to know Know how to do it. Right. Um, Right. This entrepreneur thing is a marathon. You really have to love the problem that you're solving because if you don't, like it will just run out. So 2015 for us was basically what the heck is an app? How do you get it developed? What is a wireframe? Um, starting to build branding for our business, that sort of thing. And frankly, my mom was working on mixed rows full time, and I was still living and working in New York City. So I was doing uh-huh. mixed rows like nights and weekends. So people will often say to me, it's super cute. You work with your mom, all of that. And I'm like, mm, it's not super cute. It's a business decision. It's smart. My mom <laughs> is a very savvy businesswoman. She has 25 plus years of corporate experience. Like it makes a lot of sense to part 
partner with my mom. Um, also, in that year, 2015, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. So, you know, we had to deal we had to deal with real life as we were trying to build the business. Um, then in 2016, we had a, like an MVP of our app, basically. And so it was usable. We found someone to pay us like $250 to use the application. And we were jazzed. We were like, oh, we're about to be rich. <laughs> 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 Again, I want to tell people, not so fast. Uh, but what we did gain is on the first time that Mixed Rose was used, and it was used at the very end of the day of a long conference day, and we were like, oh, nobody's about to stay and do this. But what actually ended up happening is um, people stayed in their Mixed Rose groups for so long that uh, the venue shut off the lights. And so we were really? like, we, we got something here, right? Like, it's working. Mm-hmm. We were like, it's very slow, but it's working. And so we were, you know, we we're excited about that, and that made us want to keep going. So at that point, I moved from New York City, and I moved into my baby brother's room in my family home for the first time since <laughs> I was like age seventeen. So that was odd. I um, I like to be honest about the fact that I went through a bout of depression in 2016, and the reason why I went through a bout of depression was like truthfully linked to Instagram. I promise you, every friend that I have. The summer of 2016 went to Greece. I felt like I was missing out and I was just scrolling. Mm. I was scrolling and I was mad. Um, and I was comparing myself to others, which mm-hmm. is hard not to do in this day and age. Mm-hmm. It's so important to be able to move past that. Um, in 2017, things start picking up. So I'm about to speed up the rest of the story and lay it out. So in 2017, although things were moving slow, we still knew it was working. We were generating a little bit of revenue, but the thing that changed our story is we went to a conference in May of 2017. It's called Collision Conference. It used to be in New Orleans. And so when we would go to tech conferences, my mom and I, people would literally walk up to my mom and be like, hey, baby, can I have a gin and coke? And I'd be like, no. No. Like, I was like, she gonna kill you. <laughs> that that literally, I you was like, know them, them fighting words. Did you? No, can you? I was like this. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, this is so bad. And so at this particular conference, we decided let's let everybody know why we're there. So we wore shirts that said black female founder fund me and on the back they said got seed like got seed funding Mm -hmm. and so we wear these shirts to this conference and people just lost their mind like they were like oh my god are you trying to make a political statement like what are you doing here what's going on and so these $12 shirts made this big smile so I always tell people always go as yourself honestly always Mm -hmm. go as yourself because you never know what that will do right and three really big things happened one we got our first article in Forbes as a result of those t-shirts so that was pretty cool two we met an organization that invited us to a pitch competition in albuquerque new mexico we ended up going there we pitched in it and we won and then they sent us to copenhagen denmark and we also won our category there so that was oh, pretty wow because cool. that validated for us like this isn't just a u.s mm-hmm, thing. Mm-hmm. we're at scale mm-hmm. we can service people are meeting everywhere so mm-hmm. we can service you know people at scale and then finally um this woman randomly came past our booth and she just said i like what you're doing I'm going to follow you on Facebook. And you're like, okay, great. And then at the end of 2017, when we were running very low on our friends and family capital that we had raised, um, uh, we were kind of at the point like, we know this is a good idea, but like maybe it's just not going to work out. Like, maybe it's not going to work out. Maybe a black female in the South actually can't do this. Like, you know, all of that. And the woman um, who said she would follow us on Facebook, she reached out. She said, hey, I just became executive director of a program in Birmingham. I think you guys should apply. And so that was our last hurrah. So we applied. We ended up getting in. That accelerator invested fifty thousand dollars into our business at the top of um, at the top of January of twenty eighteen. I'm like, but God, you mentioned him, so I'm gonna put it out there. But okay. God. Um, and then we went through the accelerator in um, 2018, January, April, and May of that year, Steve Case, founder of AOL, visited Birmingham, had a pitch competition. We applied, won that pitch competition. He invested $100,000, and then it took us another six months to the day, and we raised another 900000 and change, and then we became the 37th and 38th black females to do so ever in the world. Wow. So that is... That is like this. 
Yeah. Yeah, and you did that, and you didn't took a take a breath. I, I saw you. Y'all, I, I'm telling you, it's because <laughs> all those pitch competitions, they're like, tell me your whole business in three minutes. Right, like, right. All right, let's go. Boom. Mm-hmm. So how, how involved is Steve Case with your company now? Is he, or was that just a one-time investment or? No, I mean, it's great. We're part of Revolution Portfolio. It's based in D.C. You know, we see them at least once a year because they do a CEO summit. So all their portfolio companies come together in D.C., kind of agnostic of stage. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a great opportunity to learn from one another. That's amazing. That is an amazing. I mean, it's real life. It's not something we're hearing this like second, right. third party. This is like, no, this is, that's the ga- that's the black girl that did it right there. <laughs> I, say, I wish my mom was here because I'm telling you, everybody says they're like, oh, she's way cooler than you. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm like, this good. <laughs> but was she cool when they were asking her to serve drinks? Right. <laughs> Well, whenever you are in the ATL, we, we need to get Do you ever get to, because I know you got to come here. We ain't that far yeah, away. Y'all are like a stone's throw. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. Like, absolutely. And in fact, my mom will be there here shortly. We have a new customer, which is ITSMF. They mm-hmm. write yes. Oh, yeah. Technology they do pink, pink elephant. They do all of, it's a yes. it's a methodology of, of how to actually do IT. You're speaking corporate. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 But, but I mean, like that's, that's huge. Organization. Yeah. And they're one of our newest customers. So um, Carrie will be coming down for that. Carrie is my mom, y'all. I do call her Carrie because we're in the business setting. Oh. <laughs> you don't throw out mom every... <laughs> because, like, it throws people off. Oh, right. Like, oh, oh wait a second. This is a whole... Call her by her name. I'm right. Like, it's her name. <laughs> She's your mom, right? She doesn't give you the, the side <laughs> eye because I know if they were the mindset Sita. It's a whole new ball game. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's good. Okay, so we're gonna close out this this segment, but this we're segment. rolling into the next. We're one. rolling to the next one. So okay, can I ask questions for the next one? Huh? Oh sure, because I know you all like you just a, tw- a, a Twitter so about. <laughs> oh, I want to find out. Um, what the current like outlook is. I know you got us to where you are now, but then, okay, it's like, okay, we've got the funding. We have, we can exhale a little bit, but since everything is always continually and constantly changing, how, what is your next step? What is your next, you know, notch on the path or however you want to describe it? I mean, however you want to describe it, but then tell us what's happening next. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Was that see, corporate enough? I fall right into what I was going to go into. I try. I try. <laughs> see, so, see, 25 years works. See, that, <laughs> we, we, we think the same. Oh, glad you recognize. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so we will be back with Miss Ashley Ammons in a few seconds, and we are here with uh, Idea to Invention, a podcast for inventors, developers, and small businesses <laughs> with Sita and Garrett. We'll be right back. <laughs> Everybody, this is Gary and Sita with Idea to Invention, um, and we're, we're going to continue our conversation with, uh, with Ms. Ashley and how... Of Mixtros. Of Mixtros. Because there's a lot of Ashleys. Yes, I'm sorry, my bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of Mixtros, and, um, and, and so we're at the point in her story where um, they've, they've already begun to secure and be the 37th and 38th African American woman to have established and, 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 and close out on a million dollars plus of funding. Yes. You all, y'all need to understand that that's beyond phenomenal. Um, and, and on the other hand, it's like why why is it only thirty? Why does that have to be phenomenal? At right, the, why, why, it's it, like at the same at this time. point in time, it should be not we not the exception. It should be right, 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 right. And so, um, so Ashley, if you would. Um, 
see you were at the close of the last segment wanting to, can you restate what you want Ashley to cover? Well, there's two things. Um, first, what, since you received the funding and you're, you're, you're past the crawling, we've learned to walk, now we're starting to pace and, pace and run, right? Am I, is, mm-hmm. So what, how does that feel and what does that look like next? Yeah, when you're like I mean, going full, you know, are you handing off the baton to mom and y'all just doing laps around, you know, <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> You know, it's, 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 uh, it's exciting. Honestly, the night that it's so funny, the night that we closed the round, it was like October 30th, 2018. And that night we just kind of like me and mom, like this bump, we're exhausted. We just like this bump and we're like, good night, like talk to you. Okay. <laughs> um, but the most exciting thing came when we brought our dev team out here to Birmingham. So they were based in, um, El Dorado Hills, California. We brought them out here and we were able to like over the course of two days, like 12 hour days, lay out all the findings from years and years of being in this business and for understanding how we were about to lay out the product roadmap that they can now execute on because uh, we can like, yeah. pay them on a regular basis instead of being like, hey, $15,000 in development and then stop. Right, right, right. The right. thing about working with a corporate executive is my mom never let us go into debt, like, which is so important. Like, we never went into debt. We stayed in my family home. Like, we weren't doing second mortgages on homes Mm -hmm. or anything like that. And so that's extraordinary. Um, But what we did over the course of 2019 is really we started deploying capital because we knew a lot about Nixtro. Something happens when you've been in a business for a long time, you know how to avoid a lot of the potholes that you might um, end up going straight into if you're just, you know, able to, you know, start rapidly deploying capital about something you don't know that well yet. Mm -hmm. And so although it stinks on one hand that it took us so long to do this, in another way, it made us able to do risk this business significantly. Like we know this business. Mm -hmm. And so over the course of 2019, you know, it was about building a team because up until this point, it had just been a dev team and my mom and I. And so now, you know, I have somebody in operations. I have somebody in sales. I have somebody, I have an administrator my office, you know, just different things like that to help the, um, the, the, the right wheel, like mm-hmm. keep them yeah. right, so, right, right. Um, in addition to that, you know, simple things like the best thing that happened to me in 2019, like if you ask me on any given day, I'll say the day we got HubSpot, when, when I tell you having a customer uh, relationship management system is no joke. It's little, like, it's little things like that powers the chatbot on my website. Mm-hmm. You know, that powers, mm-hmm. um, powers That's like when we got gorgeous. Um, our customers, <laughs> like, uh-huh. all of that. Like, having a process for that is amazing. And realistically, the biggest thing we did is we had to put process behind hustle. My mom and I hustled in so yeah. We hustled. Like, we didn't really understand, like, where is the repeatability, you know, mm-hmm. so we were able to figure that out, you know, in, in um, 2019, and that's what we did. Um, so, I mean, it was a very, very, very exciting, a very exciting time. Um, and so where we are today is I'm at the point where I'm... I'm almost uh, meeting my projections, which is crazy because projections are BS. Like, they're so BS. They're like, <laughs> right. They're hard to put right. your even mind around because, like, this isn't real. How am I supposed to project something that isn't hard and fast real, but you got to come up with a number? And it's like, right. wow, it did happen. It did happen. Like, and it's almost like when that starts happening, because because when that starts happening, you know the leverage you need to pull. You know if you get two demos a day, it's going to yield the amount of revenue you you need by the time you know in your numbers you start getting at that point that's telling a really good story right and right we are actually preparing to raise another round of funding and so i am at the point where i can really paint a solid picture, picture. Of how i'm about to grow this business wow i love it man that's phenomenal so ha- have there been some key re- key people who along this journey since 2014 right so what now it's it's been for five to six years, right? You guys have been kind of marching. So, I mean, outside of of Steve Case, um, have there been some key people that you're like, yeah, if it wasn't for her, or, and and the, the 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 young lady that you met and said she was going to follow you on Facebook, yeah. right? Um, and, and to me, it just speaks to. And I'll get to my question, but it just speaks to how God places the right people at the right time in your life at the right time when you need it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And 
I will say so many times when we were about to throw in the towel, we got a signal mm-hmm. that it wasn't time yet. It wasn't time. It's called the Holy Spirit. Don't tell don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's a whole thing. And it's funny. It's more so like groups of people. Okay. So like I look at the, you know, the first group of people were these friends and family investors because we were pitching them an idea on a napkin, you know, mm-hmm. in 2015. And they always said to us, we're, we're betting on the jockey, not the horse at this point. Uh-huh. And, and I used to say cool, but I do believe we'll ride the sea biscuit to like get ready. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know, so it was those people who looked at my mom and I and said, I trust that y'all would really for real do something crazy. Like, you know, like I right. trust that you guys really, I trust that you guys will figure out how to make it work. You know, that's okay. what we would hear more often than not. So I would say those people. Then I would say um, like the city of Birmingham personified. One thing is when my mom and I came to Birmingham, yeah. we hustled. Like we hustled. We were not, we were not sleeping for real. We were whenever there was an opportunity to go out and meet somebody, we were there. When it was a luncheon, we were there. When we were in the accelerator learning, we were there, and we were there on time. When I pitched Steve Case, I still to this day do not know that I had the best product there. Mm-hmm. But what I do know is I was the most prepared. I came for them that day uh, and that's okay. why we've been able to you know progress accordingly I, I you know completely believe that it like it's it's a thing about hustle and um it's hustle but it's like so many other things like put together it's- so like, I do believe I'm doing my life's work right now mm-hmm. like, when lose or draw with this business I, I believe that I'm in it and I'm there's a reason that I'm doing this right now you know 90% of startups fail mm-hmm. you know I'm not you know, I understand, you know, what the stats are, but like, I do believe that this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. It, right? This is your life mission. It's in you. It's not just you're right. doing it. It is in you. It it's, is, yeah. it's here. It's like, mm-hmm. like, it is like all in mm-hmm. you. So like when, like, here's a great example of how this journey works. So I just told y'all ITSMF, you know, is a customer mm-hmm. of ours. Um, funnily enough, a couple of years ago, we were at a pitch competition really early in our journey that was hosted like in part by them. And so my mom and I pitched in this pitch competition and I like, oh, we thought we had won it because yeah. everybody's like, oh, like, they were like, oh, y'all are so great. Oh, this is great. <laughs> so like I did what people do, which they shouldn't. And I was like, oh, we have just won. Let me get my lipstick ready. So I, <laughs> I don't want to be wrinkled when I stand up and go accept this award. And we didn't win. And I had literally just moved from New York to Nashville and I had a whole meltdown. Like I literally, I think I was on the floor at a public restroom. Like I had a meltdown. Oh, wow. um, but my mom, she held down the room and she was like, you know what? There's still networking to be done in here. So you need to go get yourself. Right. She was girl, get up. Um, <laughs> the funniest thing that happened there is one, somebody in that room said, I think y'all should have won. And he ended up investing four times as much as the prize money. Into get him. out. A week, like a week later, he's one of our favorite investors. So involved, like whatever. But the other crazy thing that happened now is, you know, fast forward a few years now, this organization is a customer of ours. I'm telling you, like sometimes we just got to like stay the course. Right. Right. Ooh, right. Stay the course. So I want to know how it feels having investors. Cause you know, it's, it's one of those things to where he's like, I don't know because I don't know if I should give up part of my company. I don't know. I, do I, do I need the money? Do I just, how does that hold? Cause a lot of us, we don't know nothing about that <laughs> just yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to know. And how long do we got? Are we good? You have three minutes. Three minutes. So three minutes. yeah. Go. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, sometimes it's more money, more problems. Like I'll be honest because, uh, you take that on to a certain extent because now it's not just you. You've taken on someone else's capital and the intention is you perform on that capital, you know? Mm-hmm. So it is a, a, an extra layer of like answering to somebody. It's not just for you. Now it's for these other people who have entrusted you with this, you know, financial capital. I mean, understanding that there are great risks involved specifically when you're early stage investing, but still like you feel like a level of like, oh, like it's an extra something than what you had before for sure. So, I mean, it's great, but everything has a double edged sword. Like you just have to remember that and you have to really evaluate. Is that what you want for your business? And frankly, we've turned down capital from some people that were just like too, like that we didn't really vibe with it. 
Mm -hmm. Like people say, you know, that, that investor to founder relationship, like, you know, it it is seriously like a marriage. Well, it's like more than a marriage because like, I can't just divorce you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The capital has been deployed. It's like, I can't, I can't, it's more like having a child. (laughs) Right, 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 right. (laughs) So, so you, you know, you really need to be, um, cognizant of that and really aware of what that will do, you know, to and for your business and frankly for your sanity. You have to evaluate. Right, that. right. Because like some investors, like it's not worth it. They'll drive you crazy. Okay. It's something that's already crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mm. So, and I, maybe this is not um, the right question, but do you, are you end up giving up equity or how do, are they getting, how, how does right now are, it's a convertible note. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so we haven't done an equity round yet, mm-hmm. um, but that might be something we look into doing in the future. Yeah. And okay. so, and so the convertible note at, at a particular time, when you choose to give up equity, they can take that note and turn it into equity. Exactly. At a discount. I don't know what that was. What Somebody was came in and turned off the lights on you? No, it's just because I haven't moved. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> you know, like not recognize I think that that's <laughs> right. Energy efficiency, right? <laughs> I'm like, y'all can still see me. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but yeah, we've opted for convertible notes, which I think, you know, at these early stages is fairly common because people can't really put a value on their company just now. Right, right, right. 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 Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So we'll wrap up this one and then come back. Yeah. So we'll wrap up this this segment and come on back. And um, when we come back, we want to we'll ask you a, a, a key question um, in regards to your advice for for entrepreneurs because I, I I think what you're doing in the tech space um, is is critical and and the path that you've gone to raise capital, not many of us have done that. Mm -hmm. Um, And and the information you have is very valuable. So I want to kind of close it out and give some good nuggets of information that people can can kind of walk away with like, oh, okay, I I got that. And then we want to make sure that that we highlight your company. And if there's anything um, special or upcoming that you want folks to know, please please let us know when we come back. So this is Cita and Garrett with uh, Eye to Eye, a podcast for uh, inventors, developers, and small businesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, Black Girls at Rock. And Black Girls at Rock. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that. I appreciate that. And we'll be back in two minutes. All right, see ya. What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle. Every career. Every smile. Every tear. Each family. Each friend. It builds and makes us who we are. One community. Every boy, every girl, each kink, each curl. We wouldn't change a thing because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions, and our fears. These are the things that keep us. These are the things that make America. Us. Our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. Hey, podcast family, this is Sita and Garrett coming Mm -hmm. back with Eye to Eye, a podcast for inventors and small businesses. Um, And I forgot the the main title, From Idea to Invention. Did I say that? 
I don't think so. I don't think I said it. That's because, uh, you know, I'm just Mm -hmm. like, I'm still, like, my mind is still like, hmm. Right. All this information is going back and forth and this this knowledge that Ashley is dropping. Not sprinkling. (laughs) She's like, (laughs) pow. So, (laughs) um, we uh, we wanted you to talk about what you said. You had asked the last question. You said about um, anything that's coming up and then... There's something else you asked. So, yeah, so if there's anything that's coming up for um, Mixed Rows um, that you would like to highlight, um, as well as um, any... Oh, the giving advice. Right. Yes. So if, if, you know, an entrepreneur, inventor, have they have an idea, right, and their idea could be an app, right, what advice would you give them to start them on their journey, um, and you know how folks are, you know, when we have an idea, we usually think that it's going to be a million dollar item, right? And we think it's going to happen yes, like yesterday, but in reality, it won't. So what would you give them? What type of advice would you give that type of entrepreneur? Um, well, the first I would say is specifically early on, you need to share your idea with people because you need to get feedback, specifically mm-hmm. people who are going to be your customer. Like you need to hear what they're saying and then you need to distill that down to what actually matters for your business. But for people who are going to give you advice, you know, maybe from an investor perspective or that sort of thing, just guard who you are allowing to really influence where your business goes. Because mm-hmm. People will want to give you advice here, there and everywhere. And a lot of times it will be something that does not matter at the stage that you're at. Mm-hmm. So I always say, uh, take, real advice from the person who's up with you at 3 a.m. thinking about this problem. Uh, that's probably the best person, the first to person advice yep. from because people give you advice. Sometimes people give me advice for mixtures and I'm like, <laughs> I mean to give you the side eye, but I just gave it to you. Yeah, like I'm, just, I'm like, wow, you're too much. You know, I think that, um, you know, I think that's a big one. I think that one, you have to have, you have to have a lot of passion around this. Like when a founder comes to me and they say, I'm looking for a problem to solve, I'm like, hold on right there. I said, because um, looking for a problem to solve, you may end up creating software for something that, that doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Right. right. It doesn't need to be solved yet. Or, right. You know, what have you. So really love the thing that you're doing and have, you know, have felt it, have experienced it so that like when, when, cause there's going to be good and bad times. So when bad times come, you can find a way to push through those. I also think having a co-founder is, key. <laughs> you know, I think um, there's a difference between sharing your idea with someone who can just be like, Oh, pat on the back. I hope you feel better to someone who is like down in the trenches with mm-hmm. you, has put their money into this, you know, is invested mind, body, and soul. You know, with my mom and I, we know that like when one of us is down, the other one's usually up. And so that usually balances out, which is great because I mean, there are tough times. There have been tears, there have been cuss words, there have been like all the things. <laughs> um, and it's something to having somebody um, on that journey with you, not who can just, you know, be empathetic but like who's like in there with you. Um, another thing that I would say to people is state your truth. I tell you what, my life, mm. and you know, this might take you to be like to be in it for a little bit of time. Yeah. But like my life got significantly better when I told people exactly what was on my mind. Mm-hmm. Like I have literally told investors that they can go to you know where before because like I don't have any time for anyone's games. Because, mm-hmm. You know, for a long time in Nashville, people told me that a black female in the Southeast could never raise a million dollars. Like they would say that can't happen. You have a great idea. Uh, your mom is a baby boomer. So that's definitely not going to happen. And it's funny because I'm like, it happened. Right. Right. In other words, she did not keep um, her place. (laughs) I mean, I think that there is peace in really believing in you, like really, you know, betting on yourself and then being able to not, it's not about being rude, but it is about like not letting people get away with nonsense. Like Mm -hmm. when people uh, exhibit bad behavior in front of me, I call it out. I'm like, no, I was like, I don't know who you did that with, but like, I'm not the one. It's not going to work. Right. Hopefully they don't do it to another one of, because, you know, usually they're going to do it to somebody who is oppressed. They're going to do it to Mm. somebody who is a female or minority or, you know, um, someone whose sexual orientation is different from theirs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just have no time for that. So when I see it, just so you know, y'all, I'm coming for you. You (laughs) And you're doing something crazy. I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's what I like. 
That's wow. what I like. That, that, that is awesome. Oh, can I say, wait, there's one more thing. Yes. The last thing is, so I'm not a big fan when people tell me, because oftentimes people will be like, you know, I have this business problem. And then they'll be like, have you read this book? And then usually I'm like, when? When did I, when did I have time to read the book? When right. The time that I wrote the book, because I'm a more, I'm more of a podcast person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because podcasts, you can feed your mind and be doing other things at the same time. Mm-hmm. Love. But what I will say is there is one book. One book. It is called Sell More Faster, and man, it changed my life uh, as a as a scaling uh, startup business founder. And here's why: when you are scaling, you really have to narrow your market. So people used to say, you know, what are one of the markets you at Mixture service? And I would say higher education. But now I can tell you because of this book, it's not just higher education. I really my sweet spot is colleges with like less than ten thousand students, uh, high tuition, low acceptance rate. They have an innovative center on campus, I'm generally looking for a program director. Those are the people that say yes to me 100% of the time. And when you know your business like that... Wow. Mm. She did it again. She dropped it. <laughs> okay. Um, man. Okay. Let me ask this question because I wanted to ask it earlier on. Your app, it, even though, even though your, your focus may be education, corporate um those aren't the only levels that your app is as can, can, can be, can be in, utilized right, right. in can you highlight that for us so that our customers know okay well you can use the mixtros app in these type of scenarios yeah i mean for us inside of higher ed and uh inside of higher ed and corporate anytime you're bringing 50 or more people together that's the case for mixtros so okay. it could be a meeting it could be a luncheon because mixtros can facilitate your lunchtime seating um or dinner time seating um it could be breaking into private teams anything like that and those are the natures of working in a larger enterprise and being on a college campus those are communities is that just need to keep colliding and so that's why Mixtros works over and over and over and increasing a student's engagement for example keeps them on campus which means their tuition stays on campus mm-hmm. that's what these schools want, want to happen but, you know there are use cases all over the place people come to us for things like please mix up my rehearsal dinner for example right because at a wedding people be like I'm with the bride I'm with the groom but realistically y'all are about to be one big family so mm-hmm. wouldn't it be funner to know you know who at this wedding mm-hmm. is going to dance at the reception for for example, and who at this wedding is going to this or that, and mixtures can do that. It, um, we say our new tagline is, we help your people find their people. Uh, I like that. I like that. I like that. That's nice. That's that next t-shirt that you wear. Wait, to the... I'm like this. You see how that one? You see what it does here? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, okay, so we, if anyone's interested in the app, revisit your website. It's not like you yeah. go go to the app store and down. You, you can get to the app store. Can you? Okay, tell us how you to get the app. But uh, Mixtures is location based, so if you okay. launch Mixtures, like if you downloaded Mixtures right now and launched it, depending on where you were, there might not be a mix available. Right? Oh, okay. And so Mixtures is event driven. So you know we're not asking you to just like if you're walking down the street in Atlanta right now, for example, mm-hmm. we're not asking you to just like open the app and get <laughs> mixed in with the people that are around. You. We're saying if, let's say, if Eye to Eye was hosting a networking event and you were there, that's when you would launch Mixed Rose and that's where you would be able to meet like minded people around you because the great thing is you already have one big thing in common. You've chosen to attend the same event. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we break it down from there. Okay. And this is something that's pre done. This is not impromptu having it done, or is it impromptu? So the part, uh, the setting up of the mix is pre. Okay. Like if you guys were my event host, we're a SaaS company, so you get onboarded virtually and you're able to set up your mix in under 30 minutes. And then on your event day, as your attendees come in, they launch the app and they're able to complete it. It takes them two and a half minutes to do it in real time. I got you. Makes yep. sense. That's a good okay. idea. Yep. And the good news is, too, I'm moving to, like, a web-based application, which I'm super jazzed about. Uh, when we first built Mixtures, we built it native to iPhone and Android. Right. So that's, of course, still available. But we also are going to have a web-based app, meaning you'll just be able to type my.mixtures.com and get, and get right there. Wow. You know, in 2020, people are kind of, like, app overloaded. They're filling the right. way. Right, yeah. right. Wow. Got you. So she's listening to her audience. Right. Listen, uh, to take it in here. And I might roll my eyes first, but like I. <laughs> right, right. And then you'd be like, uh, maybe that does make sense. Yeah. I'm like, 
I'm like, can y'all have several seats? All right. <laughs> Well, are we, does that, nope, that looked like we are out of time. Oh. That went quack, quack, quack. That went very quick and fast. It was quack. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. This oh, has yeah. been enlightening, reassuring, everything. Just all wrapped up. Right, together. right. So well, y'all, mm-hmm. y'all are so welcome. It, bring, it brings me all the joy to hear about just people who are different. And I mean different in every single way. Start businesses, do a business. Is it a good thing? It's mm-hmm. a good thing. Oh wow! So we thank you so much and and appreciate all the the wisdom and knowledge. And we'll definitely be in touch because there's so much that you're going through that we are at the beginning stages, and you you just never know who can help you usher you through your next phases. And so don't be don't be uh, surprised. When you're like. Do we got a cell phone number? <laughs> we oh. my new friend. Right. right. <laughs> Is her cell phone number on the profile that we can do? Um, program me her in? No, we don't. We don't, uh, we don't get her afterwards. Get her information so don't afterwards. hang up. <laughs> <laughs> all right so you take us out all the way well y'all we, we appreciate you you're hanging with us today with eye to eye and hope you have uh received some some good information some good nuggets of, of knowledge um from from ashley uh ammons mm-hmm. of mixed Trose. and you can find her at mixed Trose's, m-i-x-t-r-o-z dot com mm-hmm. um and uh she will mix up your your, your, your people, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's people to find, find their, their people. people, right? I like that. Yep, Gosh. I love it. All right, so as we always say in party, take care, be blessed, and be a blessing. See ya. Mm-hmm.